الحمد لله الحمد لله الذي خالق السماوات والأرض يحيي ويميت وهو على كل شيء قدير أحمده سبحانه وتعالى وأشكره أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن سيدنا محمد عبده ورسوله أما بعد يقول الله تعالى في القرآن العظيم أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وما أمر إلا ليعبد الله مخلصين له الدين صدق الله العظيم All praises are for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the one who created the heavens and the earth the one who has power to do whatever he wishes the one who gives life and takes life we put our trust in our creator and we pray always for his guidance and protection i testify that there is none to be worshiped but allah he is alone and he has no partner and i testify that prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam is his servant and final messenger ibadallah my dear brothers and sisters allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in al quran wama umiru illa liya'budu allah mukhlisin lahu ad-din what is the command the command is that we worship allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sincerely in this worship of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala it is not only when we are being faced with calamities and trials and tribulations in our lives but this worship is a continuous worship it is worship all the time because that's what we were created for wama khalaqtu al-jinna wal-insa illa liya'budun and we have only created jinn and men for the purpose of worshiping me this is what allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in al quran there are people in the world today who move closer or have some connection with their creator whenever they are sick or whenever their trials whenever their difficulties in their lives we muslims alhamdulillah it doesn't matter what the circumstances are we always strive to connect with our creator prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam he says ittaqu allah haythu ma kunt worship your lord wherever you may be whatever the circumstances may be you don't have to wait for a situation if you are sick you are healthy you are rich you are poor you are strong you are weak 
you're traveling or you're at home, whatever the circumstances may be, always connect with the one who created you, the one who gave you life, and the one who has power to take that life from you. My dear brothers and my dear sisters, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminds us in Al-Qur'an that our faith, it's in our hands. We can make differences in our lives. Allah is always there to help us, to give us the assistance that we need. He says in Al-Qur'an, إن الله لا يغير ما بقوم حتى يغير ما بأنفسهم. Verily, Allah does not change the condition of a people until they change that which is within themselves. And and just don't look at it from you know the perspective of a country or or a community. Look at it from yourselves, ourselves, and look at it from our family. We have the ability to make that difference. If we strive, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He will help us. You know, in terms of helping our brothers and sisters, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, Allahu fi awni al-abd, ma kan al-abd fi awni akhihim. Allah will come to the aid and assistance of his servant, once that servant comes to the aid and assistance of his brother. And so that's what we are being told, that, and, and that's the promise of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through his Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And we know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not go back on his promise. And so this is a time, my dear brothers and my dear sisters, for us to continue to make sacrifice, to do that which will make a difference in our lives and a difference in the lives of others. We, we have just finished a beautiful season, season of ibadah, a season of hajj, season of sacrifice. A season that we were so blessed and fortunate to receive. You know, there are opportunities that will always come. But who knows if we will have that opportunity. Ramadan comes and goes. But with its coming, there are so many who have gone and are not able to reap that opportunity again. The 10 days of Dhul Hijjah, the best days in the year, will come and go. We had the opportunity to witness it and to be able to do the good things that we wanted to do. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept from all of us. 
But who will see it or who will be present when it comes again? And so don't lose the opportunity when it presents itself. My dear brothers and my dear sisters, life is all about sacrifice. It took some sacrifice from each and every one of us to be here today for Salatul Jum'ah. You never had to go through this before, where you had to go online or call the masjid and sign up. You were privileged that you can walk at any time. And even if there was no space, you could pray on the street, pray on the sidewalk. You don't know, we don't know what life has in store for us. So Allah has given us life. Use it, my dear brothers and my dear sisters, to make sure that you make a difference. This is not a time to just sleep and take things as they come. Muslims are always proactive. They plan for the future. They plan for the time when they will meet with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We don't wait for that day, but we know we have to make preparation for that day. Ya ayyuha al-lazina amanu, ya ayyuha al-lazina amanu, attaqu Allah wal tanzur nafsum ma qaddamat li ghad. O you who believe, Fear Allah, worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and look to what you are preparing for the morrow. We are being told that in the Quran. So we are not waiting until that time comes. We start preparation for that time. And that's the proactiveness of Muslims. That we are always planning. And even if we are not able to execute our plans, we know that once it's good, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will reward us for those good intentions that we have. Verily, actions are bought by intentions, as Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said. And you will have the reward for that which you have intended. My dear brothers and my dear sisters, our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he reminded us about faith, about iman, and about the sacrifice that comes with it. It is one of the branches of Iman. He says, Al Iman bid'un wa sab'una shu'ba. Afdaluha qawlu la ilaha illa Allah. Wa adnaha imatatul adha anit tariqa kama qala sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Iman is some 70 plus branches. The best of it or the highest of it is to say that there is none to be worshipped but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the lowest of its branches is to remove something from the pathway that will be harmful. You see that it is harmful to others and so you remove it. That's the sacrifice. That you don't leave it 
so that people will be harmed. But you see that you can do something good. You can see that you can do something that will bring some comfort to people. You make sacrifice by removing it. That's part of our faith. Yes, we have been promised Jannah. Man qala la ilaha illallah dakhala al Jannah. He who says that there is none to be worshipped but Allah, he will enter paradise. But we are not just content with that. We know that our charity, we know that our prayers, we know that our Hajj, we know that our Umrah, we know that every our fasting, every good act that we do will make our pathway faster towards paradise. And so we make sacrifices so that we can enter paradise with the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at a, a very rapid pace. Because just saying la ilaha illallah would not take us there as fast as we would wish to be in paradise. And that's the sacrifice. That's where sacrifice comes in. That we, we, we look at our time, we look at our, our resources, we look at our knowledge, we look at everything that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given to us and we strive to make sacrifice out of the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytani rajim inna a'atayna kal kawthar فَصَلِّ لِرَبِّكَ وَنْحَرُ إِنَّ شَانِئَكَ هُوَ الْأَبْتَرُ Verily, we have given you in abundance. So glorify your Lord and make sacrifice. It's not all about the, 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 the sacrificing of an animal as we had just gone through that, uh, you know, that sunnah of Prophet Ibrahim and Ismail in which we, we commemorate. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says in the Quran, it is not the, the flesh, nor the blood that reaches Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but it is your taqwa, your God-fearingness, your piety, your righteousness that reaches Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so, my dear brothers and my dear sisters, let us not just allow this season to go away and we go back dormant and we forget that there was that you know, opportunity that was given to us to live this season and experience this season and to reap the rewards of this season of ibadah, the season of sacrifice, the season of hajj. Remember what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, وَعَبُدْ رَبَّكَ حَتَّى يَأْتِيَكَ الْيَقِينَ And worship your Lord until that time comes. That is the, the, the true, the, the truth that you have no doubt about it. What is that time? That time when you will return to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So continue to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala morning and evening. Continue to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala every day of your lives. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us to stay focused. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Help us and protect us and guide us. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keep us close to him at all times. Aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum wa li sa'ir al-mu'min al-mu'minat min kulli dhamb fa astaghfirun innahu huwa al-ghafur al-rahim.
الحمد لله الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين رضوان الله عليهم إلى يوم الدين أما بعد my dear brothers and my dear sisters Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala advises us in the Quran as a matter of fact it's a command in the Quran he says waltakum minkum umma yad'una ila al-khair wa ya'muruna bil ma'ruf wa yanhawna 'anil munkar let there arise out of you a band of people who will invite towards good, who will enjoin right and forbid evil. It may not be done by everyone. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying that they, they always have to be a group. In the, you, you have to think about it. Again, not only that group in, in terms of a, a masjid or in terms of a community but think about it as a group in terms of your family maybe uh, if everyone just leave everyone to live however he or she wants to live then you may not be able to accomplish that goal of making sure that everyone is worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, striving to be closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So it is required that within every family, and you're not talking about just the mother and father or husband and wife and children, but you're talking about your extended family. Within every family, you need to have that group or a few people who will always be willing to invite to good and join right and forbid evil. Allah says that these are the ones who would be successful. So you have your uncles and your aunts and you have your cousins and you have your nephews and nieces and you have, uh, you know, uh, so many other family members. They, they need to be that group that will reach out and make sure that they stay on the right path. It takes, it requires sacrifice. And as we talk about sacrifice, my dear brothers and my dear sisters, you, you just, uh, you were just reminded of the greatest of sacrifice. Look at Prophet Ibrahim alayhi salam. He left his wife and young child in the desert, barren land, knowing that there was no people coming there, there was no water, no food. But it was the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Had he not made that sacrifice, can you imagine what that barren land would have looked like today? Look at what it, it is today because of his sacrifice. Millions go there year after year to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he, he loved Makkah dearly. And he expressed that love, saying that if my people had not thrown me out, I would not have leave, uh, left you. That was his love for Makkah. But he made sacrifice. He went and he established the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Medina. Imagine, think about it. Where we would have been today had they not made the sacrifices like in the battle of Badr and the battle of Uhud and the battle of the trench. 
what would have been our fate? And so it's required of us to make sacrifices every moment of our lives. And there may come a time when we will have to, even if we are in need ourselves, we'll have to give up our needs for other people. وَيُؤْثِرُونَ عَلَىٰ أَنفُسِهِمْ وَلَوْ كَانَ بِهِمْ خَسَاسًا This was the, the way of the companions of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. They give preference to other people over themselves even though poverty was their own lot. And so, my dear brothers and my dear sisters, think about our brothers and sisters in Lebanon. They need our help now. Yes, there are people all over the world who need help. But this is immediate. This is something that... These are people who are suffering because of what happened to them. Think about the people that you can make a difference in their lives, the people who just went through the storm and they don't have electricity and maybe you're living next door to someone that you can give electricity to. Think about the difference that you can make in the lives of others. And finally, my dear brothers and my dear sisters, you know, it's not always for us to wait on others to do things for us. We need to do things for ourselves so that we can also benefit others. And the census that is happening right now, each and every one of us have the opportunity to make a difference for those who will come after us. So like you heard before, if you haven't done it, don't leave without doing it. Complete that survey. And make sure that you take the message to your families. It's good. Let there arise out of you a band of people who will invite towards good. This is something good for our benefit and for the benefit of others. So take that message to your families and your friends and your neighbors and everyone so that we can make a difference in our communities. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us from among his most beloved for Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he said that we are all the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the most beloved to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are those who are most beneficial to the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so make sure that you do something that will benefit others, that will make a difference in the lives of others, whether they are Muslims or they are non-Muslims. لقد أمرنا الله سبحانه وتعالى في القرآن العظيم حيث قال إن الله ملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل وسلم على عبدك ورسولك محمد وأرضى الله من خلفائه الأربعة أبي بكر وأمر وثمان وعلي ونستة الباقين المبشرين بالجنة ونسائر الصحابة ونتابعين ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين اللهم عز الإسلام والمسلمين اللهم نور قلوبنا بنور الإيمان وثبت قلوبنا على دين الإسلام ولا تجعل في قلوبنا غلا للذين آمنوا ربنا إنك رؤوف رحيم اللهم لا تدع لنا في مقامنا هذا ذنبا إلا غفرته ولا هم إلا فرجته 
ولا حاجة من حوائج الدنيا والآخرة إلا قديتها ولا مريضا إلا شفيت ولا ميتا إلا رحمت ولا دينا إلا قديت اللهم تقبل منا إنك أنت السميع العليم وتب علينا يا مولانا إنك أنت التواب الرحيم عباد الله إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والباقي يذكرون لكم تذكرون فاذكروا الله على نعمه واشكروه على آله ولا ذكر الله أكبر والله يعلم ما تصنعون قم السلام